Welcome everyone to our short video overview of the forms related to aggregate facility benchmarking. As previously mentioned, we'll be going over the aggregate facility specific benchmark application form, the aggregate facility benchmark unit request form, and the aggregate benchmark unit option to support workbook. This will only be a brief overview of the forms. More official and formal guidance will be available on the tier website at a later date. First off, we'll start with the Aggregate Facility Specific Benchmark Application Form. The Aggregate Facility Specific Benchmark Application Form is required for the aggregate facilities who would like to utilize 2019 emissions and production volumes to set their facility specific benchmarks for the 2020 compliance year. Those who are familiar with our form should be familiar with the layout of this form as well. To begin, I would like to bring everyone's attention to a few key items on how our forms work. First off, please make sure you have macros enabled to have full and proper functionality of the forms. And secondly, additional clarity and information and instructions are available in the form of pop-up comments, which can be viewed when you hover your cursor over the red triangles. We are requesting this form and all required documents to be submitted to our inbox at aep.ghg at gov.ab.ca. In the submission tab is where the aggregate facilities are able to request confidentiality of the information they provide, as well as find a good summary of all the required documents that need to be submitted for a complete facility-specific benchmark application. In the Section A tab, this tab requires aggregate facilities to provide information on the aggregate facility, who the person responsible for the aggregate facility is, and who is a certifying official. Note. Each unique aggregate facility is required to submit a separate form. Here in the benchmark unit tab is where the aggregate facility will submit the request for a benchmark unit. The aggregate facility is able to request a benchmark unit from the three predetermined options utilizing the algorithm quantification methodology for option two or request an alternative benchmark unit altogether. For the predetermined options, the aggregate facility will be required to provide the correlations and the coefficients of variances as defined in the quantification methodology. For option two, correlations and the results of the regression analysis need to be provided. And for the alternative options, we request that the aggregate facility reach out to the department ahead of time to discuss their alternative option proposal. In the Section B1 tab, aggregate facilities are required to provide the stationary fuel combustion emissions for each Petronix ID contained within the aggregate. In addition, the aggregate facility will be required to identify the quantification methodology used in determining fuel volumes and emission. This tab has about 23,000 23, rows, so it should be enough for most aggregate facilities. If an aggregate facility requires additional space, please contact us for further assistance. Section B2 is designed for aggregate facilities to provide stationary fuel combustion emissions and fuel use for non-Petronex reported fuels. Unlike Section B1, non-Petronex reported fuel use does not need to be broken down to a Petronex facility at E level, but will be required on an aggregate level. Note, fuels that had the federal fuel charge paid do not need to be reported. This section tab is designed for aggregate facilities to report the production or volume of their benchmark unit that was requested in the benchmark unit tab. Do not let the term production here confuse you. We are referring to the benchmark unit. Again, the volume of the benchmark unit must be reported for every Petronex ID within an aggregate facility. Even those facilities that do not have any volume of the requested benchmark unit, those facilities are required to report a volume of zero. Again, please contact us, as, contact us if more space is required. Section E calculates your requested facility-specific benchmark based on the data you provided for your aggregate facility, and if approved, will be used to determine your aggregate's compliance obligation for 2020. In the last tabs of the form, uh, which are all related to the verification of your aggregate's 2019 emission and production volumes. Section G requests some additional general information on your third-party verifier and requests information on how the selected verifier meets the requirements of the tier regulation. Section 
H requests additional details on the verification team who completed the verification for your aggregate facility. The conflict of interest checklist and the statement of qualification. Uh, these tabs are required to be filled out by the verifier to ensure there are no conflicts of interest and, and that they agree to meet all the requirements of the tier regulation to be your verifier. Uh, the following tab, the Statement of Verification tab, is for the verifier to fill out and will contain the aggregate facilities emission and production assertions with the final calculated facility specific benchmark along with any conclusions to the verification process. Lastly, the Statements and Certification tab is to be signed by the certifying official of the aggregate facility certifying the requested benchmark unit and the emission and production volumes. Very briefly, that was an overview of the aggregate facility specific benchmark application form. Now we'll briefly go over the aggregate facility benchmark unit request form. Unlike the benchmark application form, the benchmark unit request form does not require any verification and it is for aggregate facilities who would like to utilize a 2020 base on year for the 2020 compliance year. The instruction tab to the benchmark unit request form is identical to the application form and we have already covered some key details. We are requesting this form and all required documents be also submitted to our inbox at aep.ghg.gov.ab.ca. Again, the submission tab is where aggregate facilities are able to request confidentiality of the information they provide as well as find a summary of all the required documents that need to be submitted for a complete benchmark unit request. Uh, also again, this tab contains the administrative information on, on the aggregate facility. Note one more time, each unique aggregate facility is required to submit a separate benchmark unit request form. The benchmark unit request tab is identical to the one in the benchmark application form to reiterate some of the previous information for the predetermined options the aggregate facility will be required to provide the correlations and the coefficients of variances as defined in the quantification methodology for option two correlations and the results of the regression analysis need to be provided and for the alternative options we request that an aggregate facility reach out to the department ahead of time to discuss the alternative option. And finally, the request form ends with the statement of certification to be signed by the certifying official of the aggregate facility, certifying the requested benchmark unit. And now we'll briefly go over the aggregate benchmark unit option to support workbook. This workbook was developed to help guide aggregate facilities through the option to process to identify a benchmark unit outside the three predetermined options. This is designed to help identify benchmark units for aggregate facilities that have unique operating characteristics, such as gas storage aggregate facilities, where a mix of production receipts and disposition may best reflect this, these facilities' emission profiles. This workbook is still in the developmental phase and may produce errors or unexpected results. We are open to receive general feedback and feedback on specific errors. When you open up the workbook or click on the new analysis button, the following menu pops up. Selecting resume analysis will let an aggregate facility continue their previous analysis, while selecting the new analysis button will go through the process of choosing the relative activities for your aggregate. First, the tool asks you to select how many years of monthly data you would like to test, followed by key activity IDs that are reported at the aggregate facility. Once the key activities are selected, the user will need to select the products reported at the aggregate facility. For this short demonstration, we will select one year's worth of data, uh, select disposition production as receipts as the key activities, and choose oil, gas, and water as our products. Once the user fills in all the requested data, they are able to hit the Run Correlations button to proceed with the Option 2 analysis. We have created a test data set as a demonstration for this presentation. As you can see, the results of the analysis indicates that an acceptable benchmark unit for this test facility could be the production of oil. The input tab contains the results already in the format for the aggregate facility benchmark application form and or the benchmark unit request form. 
This concludes our brief overview of the forms.